Hi guys. When Nikon first released their flagship Z9 camera about a year ago now, I took one out into the field right away and spent some time with it. And while the camera impressed me overall, it definitely had some limitations, especially in terms of the autofocus. So when recently the opportunity arose again to take the Z9 into the field with me for an extended period of time, I jumped at it right away. So let's take a look and see how the Z9 performed this time around and what settings brought me the most success, especially in terms of the autofocus. The first thing you notice when you grab a Z9 is that it's built like a tank. It feels super sturdy, well made, and you just feel like you can take it anywhere and it will perform for you. Equipped with its 45 megapixel stacked BSI sensor, it delivers fantastic photos with great details and super smooth, nice looking video files with no overheating. On top of that, the Z9 comes with two CFexpress Type-B card slots and a decent sized battery. The only downside to this compelling package is the weight of about 1.3 kilos or 2.9 pounds. If you're hand holding the camera with smaller lenses, that can feel quite heavy at times. But we might hear a solution announced to that very soon. What has blown me away when using the Z9 with Nikon's latest Z mount lenses in the field is the incredible image stabilization. It's by far the best of any brand that I've ever used. The same is true for taking photos where you can take incredible images at very low shutter speeds, even handheld, as long as your subject is not moving though. To get the image stabilization to work the best for me, I always set it to the standard mode. I know a lot of people like to put it in sports mode, but personally I find sports mode a little bit too jerky. It works well when I'm moving the lens fast, but whenever I'm trying to actually hold something steady, the standard image stabilization seems to be much better. Talking about video, this is where the Z9 truly shines. It goes all the way from 4K30 to 8K60 and all that with internal ProRes recording and no overheating. So this is absolutely fantastic. And the footage I'm getting out of the camera looks beautiful with great details and fantastic colors. As you can see in these clips as well, the autofocus works very well and tracks the birds pretty good all over the viewfinder. When I'm shooting video, I'm relying on the AF area with continuous tracking. So the camera just finds the subject all over the viewfinder and then tracks it. That has worked the best for me when it comes to video shooting. The files I'm getting out of the Z9 have great colors, fantastic detail, but in the beginning, they always look a little bit noisier compared to an R5 camera, for instance, but they clean up very well in DX or Pure Raw 3 or the new Adobe noise reduction feature. So there's no concerns there and I end up with fantastic looking final images even when taken at high ISOs. What I also really enjoy is that because of the stacked sensor, I don't have to deal with any rolling shutter or wobbles in the images, something that we're used to seeing from other brands, unfortunately. So this is very welcome not having to deal with any of that. One morning I was walking around in the mangroves, not sure what I was gonna photograph, and I suddenly spotted a group of purple-backed fairy wrens, and they're just darting all over the mangroves. So it was actually quite challenging to even get them in the viewfinder, but the Z9 managed to latch onto them focus on them and I ended up with some nice images. At times it would get a little bit distracted with the branches, but overall the autofocus performed very well and gave me some nice images. Here's my favorite image from that session and as you might guess, there's one little problem with that image and that's that annoying branch going across the birds. So I opened that raw file in Photoshop, put one of my pro sets on to get the colors right, and then started to remove the branch. Once I was done with that, I ran my masterclass workflow on the image and then got the file that you can see on the screen now. And I'm pretty happy with it. What do you think about it? And if you're not quite sure when it comes to image editing and how to get the most out of your images or to remove certain things, I would love to help you with my process and masterclass. My process allow you to get a fantastic starting point with just one click where you get great colors and the great presets all with the one click. And in my masterclass, I teach you step by step everything you need to know in Photoshop to make your own images look amazing. So if you want to take your image editing to the next level, make sure to check these out down there in the description. A great test for cameras is always the fighting lorikeets in my backyard. These guys just never sit still when they come to my bird feeder and just love ruffling each other's feathers. So here's a series of images of two lorikeets going right at each other and as you can see, the Z9 tracked it very well and I got some beautiful looking images with great colors. Overall, with these lorikeets as well, I was very impressed how the Z9 performed, even in relatively low light with high ISO and the birds going full speed at one another. Let's talk about the most important topic when it comes to the Z9, the autofocus. 
This is an area where Nikon has built up a little bit of a bad reputation over the years, but fortunately it seems like they're on a good way to overcome that. When I took the Z9 out initially with the original firmware, the autofocus was far improved compared to the Z6 II or the Z7 II, but it still lagged behind the likes of Canon and Sony. Especially the subject recognition at larger distances or the low light performance and low light tracking and low light subject recognition left something to be desired. It also just simply didn't seem to track as well and would regularly lose the subject even against something like a mainly blue sky. I'm happy to report though that with the latest firmware version 3.1 the autofocus has vastly improved and is much better compared to earlier versions and you can easily rely on it in the field now. In order to get the best results with the Z9 and razor sharp images, you actually have to use more than one autofocus mode. The modes I'm using on the Z9 is a custom wide area, the 3D tracking and the spot autofocus. Wide area with tracking activated seems to find the birds the best initially and you can move that field around a little bit, helping the camera to find the target. But then when it comes to tracking, the 3D tracking actually seems to track a little bit better than the wide area. So that's why a combination of these two autofocusing modes seems to work so well in the field. And if you have to interfere with the autofocusing because you actually got stuck on the background, that's when I then would use the spot autofocus on the function button number one to bring me back into the right area where I want to focus, or you can also use the manual focus on the lens for that. So while it seems to work best to acquire focus with the shutter button and the wide area and then pass it on to the AF on button with the 3D tracking, I really did not enjoy having to press two buttons in the field to get sharp images and the best results. So I tried to cheat the system and I think I found a good solution that allows me to just press one button and still get good and consistent results. So I went to the menu and selected the largest possible wide area custom with tracking and assigned that to the shutter button. So whenever I half press the shutter button, I will engage the wide area custom with tracking. However, I'm not planning on actually engaging any tracking via the shutter button at all. I'm just using the wide area custom to find a subject for me because it can do it by itself. Whenever there's a subject in your viewfinder and you move the custom area near that subject, the camera will automatically find the subject and put a little gray box around it, which is fantastic because the 3D tracking now will not start to track from the center of the custom area like what it normally would do, but instead, because the custom area has already acquired a target, it will start tracking from that spot which is right on the bird. So now, instead of having to half press the front shutter button to acquire the target and track the target with the wide area custom, I can simply just press the AF on button on the rear of the camera and it will start tracking from this exact spot, allowing me to simply just focus with the one button instead of having to use the two buttons. So whenever I see a bird, I'll point the camera on it, I'll let the wide area custom find the bird, put a little gray box around it, and then I press the AF on button on the back of the camera, activating the 3D tracking, and it will track the bird all over my viewfinder. Using the camera that way has definitely made my life a lot easier. You might wonder why I'm not using the 3D tracking as my main autofocusing mode if it seems to work the best. And the simple reason is that I find it too hard to use because the autofocus field that allows you to acquire the focus for the 3D tracking is so tiny that you constantly have to move it all over your viewfinder and it's quite hard to place it in the right spot and it's also quite easy to just miss your subject and end up on the background for instance. So for me it was a lot more reliable to have that custom wide area find a bird for me and then activate the 3D tracking. So in a way I'm basically cheating the system by instead of using a tiny autofocus field to acquire focus for the 3D tracking, I'm using the wide area to find a bird for me and then allow the 3D tracking to take over which has made life much easier for me in the field. Which way are you using your Z9? Are you using it in a similar way to me or completely different? My main focus was really to find a way to simplify the autofocusing system and ideally just use one button to focus and I think I've achieved it and once I've done that I also had a lot of fun with the camera and got by far the best results. There are of course many other settings to change on the Z9 and one I see discussed very often is the block shot response and the subject motion. You might disagree with me, but I'm a firm believer that in terms of autofocus, a bird actually behaves quite steadily 
and not very erratic at all unless you're shooting like tiny little swallows in flight for instance. But most birds even in flight behave quite steady and the autofocus doesn't have to do many too crazy calculations. So that's why I like to set steady for the subject motion and I put the block shot response to three. In the past I had it at five but putting it to three seemed to give me the best results this time around. Setting up the Z9 that way has definitely yielded me the best results and I've gotten some fantastic photos with the 800mm PF lens and the 600mm TC lens, two lenses that have worked amazingly well on that camera. In the past the Z9 seemed to struggle even with simpler tasks like tracking a bird against a mostly blue sky, but I'm happy to report now that the autofocus also handles birds flying against busy backgrounds or even other things sort of coming in front of the bird while you're tracking it. So in that regard the autofocus has vastly improved. I had one interesting observation though that when I was tracking the birds against the water, the 3D tracking seems to struggle a lot more and the only consistent way of focusing was actually using the shutter button, half pressing it and then using the custom wide area to stay on the bird for me. So when you have the different modes on different buttons, you can quickly just switch around and find the right mode that works the best in any given situation. Where does that 9 does surprisingly well is when a subject comes directly at you. This is where a lot of cameras struggle mightily, but the Z9 seems to be very good at mastering that task. Another challenge for the Z9 in the past, and every camera really, is small birds amongst the sticks. This is where most cameras struggle and the Z9 cameras struggle in the past as well, but it's far improved these days too. The other day when I was walking through the mangroves, I spotted these brown honey eaters and they were all amongst the leaves on little branches and the camera actually picked them up very well and tracked them very well and I got a lot of nice and sharp images. There's still room for improvement because at times it was still getting stuck on branches for instance, but the majority of the time it was able to find the subject and give me nice and sharp images. Another bird I spotted that morning was this beautiful golden whistler. At first it was just hidden by all the mangroves, but then I slowly managed to walk around and actually find a spot where I could see it out in the open amongst some beautiful nice leaves. This is the raw file and then I just quickly put on my pro sets to get the best colors and then ran my masterclass workflow on it to get the best possible final result. So all in all the Z9 has definitely far improved with the latest firmware update and now works reliably and consistent in the field. It's a little bit more involved to set up and to use, but once you're used to it, you will definitely get the results with it in the field that you're after. I'm also happy to see Nikon constantly improve the camera via firmware updates. The difference between firmware 1.0 and 3.1 is quite staggering, so I can only imagine how much better the camera might potentially be in the future with a few more firmware updates. So what are your thoughts on the Z9? Are you owning one? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Are you struggling with it? What are your autofocus settings? Make sure to let me know in the comments, check out some of my other videos and hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next video very soon. Bye guys.